all right all right all right guys thanks for tuning in this is chuck up millionaire i thought i would drop this important information believing that it will help somebody tomorrow okay or to even today um there are a lot of people who come from different parts of the world to study in canadian colleges um, they apply to study in a college and then most of them when they complete they will either decide to stay in Canada uh, permanently or some of them may decide to relocate or move back to the original countries or sometimes they may even move back or uh, move to other places like the United States or other countries uh, today I want to share this information first of all this video I'm going to tell you who this video is good for okay uh, so that when you're watching you can tell right away if this video is good for you this video is good for anybody who is applying to a Canadian college to come as an international student from outside of Canada and that person has a vast number of years of experience of work vast number of years of experience of work the emphasis here is I'm talking I'm making this video for those of you who are workers you are working already and you decided you know what you want to go to the next stage you want to go study in Canada maybe for immigration purposes or for career advancement purposes or something like that if you're watching me this video is for you often at times when people apply to colleges they select their courses and then based on the courses that they select the colleges will offer them admission called letter of acceptance LOA letter of acceptance now when you do receive that letter of acceptance which means you've been admitted to study in a Canadian college as an international student the next stage is obviously to apply for your study permit your study permit here is your visa that allows you to come into Canada to come and study to take advantage to pursue that college education you want now guys this is what happens most of the time for those who have a lot of professional experience working back home in the original countries when they do apply for courses to study here and they get the admission and they apply for their visa one of the common reasons why they get visa refusal visa refusal is that the visa officer is not convinced that their professional or career backgrounds and experience or work experience has any connection with the course that this person is going to study in a college forgive me for my ugly voice you know i have a little bit of cold so i sound very funny please forgive me just pay attention to the information i'm gonna say this again one of the top reasons why a lot of people get visa refusers is that the officer sometimes the visa officer who processes your visa decision will normally state that he or she is not convinced that there is any connection between what the visa applicant did back home as a worker and the thing they want to study in a college now the general name for this reason for refusing people a visa especially when it comes to school or colleges is career and course alignment career and course alignment so i'm going to use two examples here to make my point mr ewusi joseph who is watching me right now ewusi joseph is a banker in Ghana he works with a top bank in Ghana he is he's been a teller a bank teller for a number of years for about 10 years he before he got that job he went to a polytechnic or he went to a university and then after graduating his university back home in Ghana he got a job with a bank and he's been working there faithfully for the last 10 years but all of a sudden he decided he wants to go on to the next stage by coming to Canada to study in a Canadian college now when he was applying for his admission or his courses okay for to be considered for admission 
he picked a course called paleontology paleontology actually you know what let me choose a course that a lot of people will get well he chose a course called personal support worker personal support worker a personal support worker is pretty much like taking care of elderly people um, in hospitals or sometimes in health institutions it is almost like a nursing course all right it's a health related course he applied for this course personal support worker and then he got the admission from the college he's so excited he even went ahead and he made a payment for the school fees the tuition and now he's gotten his passport ready he has applied for his study permit and is patiently waiting for his visa but then he was surprised when the visa officer made a decision and said i am refusing you your study permit application because i am not convinced that you will leave canada after your study then later on it will see joseph decided to inquire more to find out what exactly that means and then later on he found out that the actual reason why he was refused the visa is because the visa officer was not convinced that what he did as a worker in ghana as a job is connected to what he wants to study in canada in a college now let's break it down one more time he has been working in the bank as a teller or a cashier for 10 years dealing with money he decided to go to the next stage applying to a college to go and study personal support worker a course in the health sector a course which is pretty much almost like a nursing course now I want to ask you guys this question is there a connection between a bank workers former experience at the bank counting money and coming to study personal support worker in a health care area taking care of people I want you to answer that question in the comment section right now. Do you see any connection between the two stuff that I talk about? His career, his former work experience, and what he wants to study in a college. Is there any connection? Is there any connection? I expect a lot of you to say no. There is no connection. Now here is why that is a big deal. The officer is convinced that the actual intention of the person is not good enough for coming to Canada. The officer is convinced that whatever you have spent the last 10 years doing as an adult, all of a sudden you've decided to go into a different area. He's not convinced that you have good intentions for coming to Canada. It doesn't mean he doesn't think you're gonna go to the school, but he thinks that there could be other things beyond you coming to study personal support worker. You make it so easy for the officer to refuse you. Let me use another example here, all right? This woman is a nurse. She's been working in Kenya as a nurse for the last couple of years. Then she decided to apply to a college to come and study in Canada. But then when she was applying, she chose a course in carpentry. Yes, she wants to come and study carpentry. If you are a visa officer, will you be convinced that somebody who has spent a number of years doing nursing all of a sudden wants to come and study carpentry in a college would you give the person the visa if you are supposed to establish a connection between career progression and academic advancement to go back to the job is there a con connection there is there a connection there there is no connection there is no connection between a nurse with several years of experience who is coming to study carpentry? Do you see that? Guys, I have already done a video on this. It's on my YouTube channel. How to align your career with whatever you want to study in a, uni, in, a, in a college. In fact, I am carefully mentioning college because this is where a lot of visa refusers occur. Mostly for those who have been working and working and working and all of a sudden decide to come to Canada. So if you are watching this video and you are planning to apply to a college, all I'm trying to say here is this. You got to make sure that whatever course you are going to study, you can be able to argue out that there is a connection between the course and whatever you currently do as an employee. 
most of the time a lot of people will argue and let me give you an example here let me give you an example here i am a nurse coming from the country of uganda i was going through the colleges in canada and then i found a course in leadership in health leadership in health as a course now i decided to go and apply for that course i want to tell you why i think this course i can argue out that is a course that aligns with my career first of all i'm a nurse that is in the health sector secondly i'm applying for a course called leadership in health that is also a course in the health sector i can easily argue out when i'm submitting my letter of explanation to the visa officer that as a nurse who has been working for this number of years i have seen the importance of leadership in the health sector and how that can transform our health industry because of that i've decided to go and advance myself upgrade myself by learning how leadership can help me as a nurse in my field of work so that in the future i can delve into administrative or leadership role any visa officer who hears this knows that this person is trying to advance himself or herself in their career by doing further studies to become better in their field it is easy for you to see a connection guys i'm trying to say that a lot of you are getting visa refusals especially those of you who are working 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 because you never take time to ask that question how is my current job linked to the course some of you may have watched some videos or may have heard some friends here say that some courses pay a lot in canada and so because you are heard you heard this when you are picking your courses all you see is the money you are going to be making in canada right you've heard that maybe database computer courses are the ones that pay the most in canada so even though you don't have any background in computing or database or data information, right? Maybe you study archaeology or maybe you study something else or maybe you study HND in something else which has no connection with ICT. But then you decide to go and pick an ICT course and you are not able to link your professional experience as a worker to that particular course. You just make it so easy for the officer to refuse your visa. What a lot of people actually do is this, guys. Even if you have another intention for coming to Canada, which is called dual intent. Dual intent means beyond the reason that the person gave the visa officer, it is possible they may have a hidden agenda for coming to the country. It is completely fine. They know it. They know most of you have reasons for coming to Canada, aside from coming to study. Some people come because they want a better job. Some people come because they want to migrate and stay here. Some people come because of, it's called dual intent, second reason. But all I'm saying is this, at least when you are picking your courses for your colleges, pick a course that will easily align with your career that you have been doing. When you get your visa, it is not the end of the world, guys. You can easily change your course when you arrive in the country before the start of the semester. I want to pull over and make sure I stress this part well so people can hear it. Listen, so that you don't make this silly mistake and get visa refusers. Right? Let me use an example here. Let me use an example here. All right? This person is a marine officer working in an African country right now. Marine officer. He's a marine officer. Right? He's been doing this for the last 10 years. He went to school, trained as a marine officer, maybe from Maritime University or wherever. And then he got a job in Ghana. He's been doing this marine, marine job. But then all of a sudden, he doesn't like that job anymore. He wants to switch. And he decided he wants to come and study in a Canadian college. And then he applied for a course. He has heard that people make a lot of money in real estate or in auto mechanic, mechanics here. So he wants to actually switch from marine to mechanics. Or let me even use a different one. He wants to switch from marine job that he's been doing to carpentry in Canada. He found a college that offers carpentry. He wants to apply to that course. Guys, don't apply for that course. Don't. Because I don't know how you are going to explain marine, which is engineering related, to carpentry, which is woodwork. I don't see no connection there. 
I don't see no connection between the two. Whatever you can do, what, however, what you can do is this. You can actually go ahead and look for a cause that matches marine, something related to that. And argue out that you want to advance yourself. Get the admission. Get the visa. When you arrive in the country, first thing, go to your department. Go to your school, international student's office. Tell them, sir, I wanted to come and study marine or diesel, whatever. But I have had a change of mind. I no longer want to do that course. Please, I'd like you to help me change it to carpentry. The, the college is going to change it for you. Even if they don't give you that particular semester where you are supposed to start, they may give you another semester and let you start. You don't lose your school fees. Common sense. Right? Common sense there. You can come in the country and change the course. In fact, some people even come to the country and then they change the school all together and go to a different school. It's allowed. So why then will you pick a course which would jeopardize your visa application when it doesn't align with your career? Instead of you picking a course that aligns so that when you come into the country, you can be able to figure out how to treat that. I did a video some few weeks back. I interviewed a Ghanaian man, 48-year-old man. Listen carefully. The man is 48 years old. He was working in the pharmaceutical industry in Ghana, running pharmacies. He used to travel to buy drugs, not hard drugs, so pharmaceutical drugs from India and different countries. He then decided he wants to come and study in Canada at the age of 48. He applied for a course called International Business Management. That man argued out that as a businessman who travels and buys pharmaceutical products and runs pharmacy, he thinks that international business management will make him a better international businessman. And I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant argument he made when he was applying for his visa. So they granted him the visa. When the man arrived in the country, he realized that his passion is no longer in international business management. What did he do? I want you to go back and watch that interview I did with the man. He actually said it in there. He decided to switch the program to carpentry and home renovation because that is his newfound love and passion in Canada. But remember, the one he used to acquire the visa was international business management. But you can tell that he's been able to change it now that he arrived in the country. This is food for thought. This video, once again, it's going to make more sense to those of you who are considering applying to colleges in Canada and you are workers with a lot of experience. It won't make sense to you if you just jump from the high school. You know what I mean? You just jump from the high school, no work experience. This video won't make sense to you. But those of you who have been in the workforce, in the work sector, been working for a couple of years and all of a sudden you want to come to Canada and if you decide to go the college route, I hope this video makes sense to you. Hmm? Uh, my main reason for trying to do this video, for doing this video today, is that I had a conversation this morning with a follower of mine who is virtually at the stage of submitting his visa application. He decided to give me a call to ask me some few questions to seek my personal opinion, not professional opinion, personal opinion. The red flag I found was this one. No connection between his former job and the course. I asked him, I said, look, sir, put yourself in the shoe of the visa officer. The job that you have been doing for the last 10 years, does it connect to the course? He said, no. I said, do you want them to approve your visa? You see that? That is why I decided to come back and do this video here today. So that you do not pick a course that you cannot connect with in your area of study to avoid a visa refusal. If you are in the health sector and you've been working in the health sector, pick a course in the health sector. If you have been working in the financial sector, Pick a course in the financial sector. If you've been working in the ICT test sector, pick a course in ICT. If you are an engineer working there, pick an engineering related course in a college. Right? If you come here and you don't even like that course, you get a study permit first. When you come, go have that conversation with your school. Tell them to switch it for you. Tell them to change it to a different course for you. And it will be done. 
That way you avoid visa refusal. I hope this video helped you. If you did enjoy it, consider sharing it to bless somebody. That's a Choco Melonia coming your way with this video. Sorry about my ugly voice. This is not my real voice. Emanuela says it in her video. Makenje comedies. This is not my real face for me. This is not my real voice. This is my voice when I get cold. Eh? And my nose is all stuffy. Hopefully when I get fully better, you enjoy my new voice. Or my natural voice. God bless you. Thanks for watching. We don't need more money. We need more wisdom. May God bless you. Have a good day. Share the video. Bye-bye.